Ah, uh, yes, it's that time of year again. The leaves are getting darker and they have all different types of beautiful colors. The temperatures are getting colder, but not too cold. We would call it snuggly, not frigid. Of course, what time of year am I talking about? Fall, you may ask. No, it's that time of year for someone to recommend engineering samples of an Intel quad core again. Uh, I thought we were over this, people. Every year, it just seems like people forget at the same time, right around fall, that you can get engineering samples of Intel i7s for between $100 and $150. And every year, it starts to become more and more ridiculous to me that people consider this a good deal. The fact of the matter is that saying Skylake is not impressive. This is an architecture from 2015. And now it's not 2016, it's not 2017, it's not 2018, and it's almost not 2019 anymore. It's almost 2020. These quad cores are $100 for a reason. It's because they want to get rid of all of them. And they shouldn't have been sold for more than $80 a year ago. Now, to be fair, I'm not trying to blow up Timmy Joe's spot. He doesn't actually recommend it in the end, but it's almost like he it's a narrow decision, like it's because of the platform costs. But I'm here to tell you guys, it's not the platform costs. This is getting ridiculous. This processor isn't even close to making sense in the modern age we live in. And let me show you why. It's not about stretching your budget. This is the Ryzen 5 1600. It is $80 new. There's no sacrifices here. You're not gambling with some Chinese engineering processor that you hope shows up, that you hope works with your mother motherboard. This is $80 new, and you get $30 off with a motherboard if you buy it with it. And I know this is is not available to everyone, not everyone's near a micro center or lives in America, but these are usually found for about 20% more on eBay. So you can get these at most for the same price as an quad core engineering sample. And people seem to keep forgetting this. They get blown away by Skylake. They seem to just completely forget that those engineering samples are clocked like 20, 30% below what the 6700K is. And we all know what's happening to these processors that don't have enough threads. The i5s are already basically useless. Look at this. Minimum frame rates, half that of the 1600. Look, the 1600 isn't going to do 165 hertz gaming for the next 10 years, but it's never going to have a problem with 60 hertz gaming, guys. And we also know what's happening even if you add a few more threads. If we look here, it's not that different, and there's just no gamble. There's no gamble in getting a 1600 brand new instead of, and again, I can't stress this enough, guys. I know the 7700K is still up there, but those engineering samples are not 7700Ks. They're clocked like 30% lower than this. They will go all the way down here below the 1600. This isn't even an option. And the fact of the matter is, this is also cheaper than that gamble of a processor on eBay or Alibaba. And you don't even need to try to save more money. If you just get the R5 2600, this is stronger. And it's also about the same price. It's actually cheaper if you go to Micro Center. Even on Newegg, this is $120 new. And if we go to recent games like Battlefield 5, again, let's see, where is the 2600? Uh, its minimums are higher than the 7700K. Clock speeds, like, oh, up to 50% faster than most of the engineering samples that I see. Guys, please do not even consider these. In fact, what you do need to consider is why people are allowed to call these i7s in the title still. This Skylake architecture is from 2015, and the 7700K was the last quad-core i7, uh, well, to exist, and they just discontinued it. This is no longer an i7. 
This is almost an i3, and a horrible i3 at that. Intel, in under six months, will be launching Comet Lake, and this will be based, of course, on the latest 14 nanometer process that they can muster to try and just barely fight Zen 2. This is 10 cores over 5 gigahertz for $500. And what does that mean? Four cores and eight threads for 130, and these will be clocked substantially faster, substantially more reliability, better efficiency than what you're getting from these engineering samples. The engineering samples aren't even a bargain. <laughs> My God, they are a ripoff. They should be $50, especially when you consider that there are a lot of rumors going around right now that right below this i3 is going to be $80 Pentiums, probably still clocked decently faster than those engineering samples i keep seeing people hawk do not buy those engineering samples what you are buying is not an i7 it's 2019 you're buying an underclocked i3 that doesn't have a warranty and is possibly will just not work in the motherboard you have. This is the race to the bottom in PC hardware that we've been waiting for for I would say three years now. It's long overdue, but here it comes. Intel's going to fight fire with dynamite. They have an army of fabs. They can't keep up with Zen 2's technology, but they can at least try to just pump out as many 14 nanometer chips as possible. And that includes dirt cheap, four core and six core models that they can bin for gaming. This is when you'll want to make some of those budget gaming builds and it's going to be excellent. But for the love of God, do not buy an engineering sample that has no warranty is clocked lower and has a chance of just not working in your motherboard. And what I find truly bizarre is how many YouTube videos I see from tech tubers, right, that say Skylake i7 as if Skylake's supposed to command some kind of prominence. This is from 2015, and I'm starting to get confused about how people, how so many channels have not woken up to how this is not impressive. In fact, I've got a perfect example. When I was building the PC I have right now, I heavily considered an i7-6800K. This was back in 2016, and these were going for about $440. And you know what? It wouldn't have been the worst decision if I could find a motherboard that fit in my small case for the price, but I couldn't. And the motherboard that was ITX didn't have quad-channel memory, so I said to myself, it's just not worth it. I'm going to get a cheaper 6700k that i managed to get for under 300 dollars in 2016 that was a good deal but just because i used to want an i7 6800k just because this used to be a decent cpu doesn't mean it is anymore the 6700k is old news i'm sorry people it's just not worth buying not when you have this for less money than that used CPU I used to want. I get how shocking it is, how fast technology has moved, but it's time for people to stop putting Skylake in titles like it means anything. Skylake is dog shit compared to what you can get now brand new. It doesn't matter that I can now get a processor I previously wanted, the 6800K, for a half the price or even a third the price of it used to cost just a few years ago. This is a new world of innovation we are living in. It's not worth half the price. It's not worth a third of the price. It's not worth a fifth of the price. These quad-core Skylake processors should be $50 at most. They're not worth anything anymore. And this is the rapid age of innovation we finally live in again. Get used to it. Stop being blown away. I don't care. If I, if I saw a 10-core Broadwell E that used to cost, what was it, $1,700 a few years ago? That's not worth $500 now. I'm sorry. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And get ready for things to accelerate faster. Because just because Intel can race to the bottom doesn't mean AMD doesn't have some tricks up their sleeve. Two, after all, they just matched a Ice Lake laptop quad core with, you know, high CPU and clock speeds with a custom 
12 nanometer FinFET APU they made for the Microsoft Surface. AMD's got options. They've got different fabs they can use just like Intel. Intel may have an army of their own fabs, but AMD's got more options. And frankly, their architecture is good enough to compete with Intel even on some outdated stuff. This is awesome. This is a race to the bottom in prices. Expect them to get better and better and better, just like I said they would, just like you should have expected them to get for the past 10 years. Don't get complacent. I know things used to suck, but they don't anymore. Skylake is worthless. Worthless. No one should be buying any Skylake processor. And Coffee Lake should be worth, frankly, I think half of what it is now. And, I, and again, it, it just reminds me of the Cascade Lake X thing, where they're like, whoa, they're dropping the prices of uh, their HEDT lineup, Intel's, by 50. It's now half as expensive as it used to be. Not enough. Should be half that. Should be half that. When you can get an AMD 16 core for 750, when you can get an AMD 12 core with better IPC for $500, AMD's not even done rolling out their stuff. Intel may cut prices in half, and you may be able to get bargains on eBay, but they're still far and above what they should be. This price war is going to continue, and it's going to get real fun by mid next year, right before the next gen consoles come out. So I just, again, uh, some things are worth the money right now, but my God, I don't think any used Intel products are worth almost anything. And I had to make this video. Again, not trying to blow up uh, Timmy Joe or any of these other channels, especially not like Tech Yes City. It's over two years ago. I, his advice was fine back then. It was okay. But I just got to get this out there because I see videos like this still being shared like, oh my God, should I get this i7? I've always wanted an i7. And it's like, guys, they launched the i9. The i7 is the new i5, and the new i5 is weaker than AMD's mid-range CPUs. So really, the new i5s are the new i3s. Is is what it is. This is a new competitive landscape we live in, and I just, ah, please, people, get a hold of yourselves. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Share it if you do. Like it. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you like my content. All right, peace.